you know, we, we feel confident in being better than human driving about three months, basically Q2 of this year, if we feel confident of passing, having a probability of, of, of accident that is better than the, the average experienced driver. Um, and then and then it'll keep going from there. Uh, ultimately, I, I think it's going to be 10 times safer than a human driver um, and then 100 times safer.大家好,欢迎收看小林谈世界财经。上周在CES期间呢,我们有做一个影片,介绍了黄仁勋演讲时的几个重点。黄仁勋常在很多公开场合,包括他的每一次演讲,都可以听到他不断的强调,未来人形
we asked, does AI making a difference in your life today? 13% said yes. And they said, in five years from now, will AI make a difference in your life? 87% expect in five years it will make a difference. What is Gigantic it, difference. Okay, what is it going to do for people? Is it going to put anything them out of work or to work, right? <laughs> It, it, AI will do anything you want and even suggest things you never even thought of. I'd say max three or four years, maximum. And, and, and then another element of it is the robotics, is that you need, um, you can't just be thinking, AI can't just be thinking in a, in a, in a data center, it's got to do, do things. So that's where you need the robots. And you need, um, you know, self-driving cars, which obviously you've experienced. You know, we, we feel confident in being better than human driving about three months, basically Q2 of this year, if we feel confident of passing, having a probability of, of, of accident that is better than the, the average experienced driver. Um, and then and then it'll keep going from there. Uh, ultimately, I, I think it's going to be 10 times safer than a human driver. Um, and then 100 times safer. Uh, like it's to, to the point where really the, it, it just won't crash. So self-driving, some timeline, self-driving cars, certified government certified self driving you think will be within a year well year? i mean there, there already are um autonomous you know in in small in some regions like waymo has autonomous vehicles with no one in it uh but they're limited to like, like a few cities in the us the, the tesla solution which is um a much more difficult path to go but ultimately uh, much more powerful is is a, a a general solution to self-driving. The, the, the Tesla software is just purely AI and vision. Um, doesn't rely on any expensive sensors, no LIDARs, no radars, uh, or, or it doesn't require, it doesn't even require knowing the area beforehand. Like it, you could put, it, you could have a drive someplace that's never been before and no Tesla's ever been before. It could even be an alien planet. I mean, it, it and the car will still work, still drive. So that's, that's, that's this year, you know. And, and when can I get a home robot, okay? Right. Uh, well, so that's the, that's the other element um, is our, our humanoid humanoid robots. So I think probably most people, if not everyone, would like to have their own personal C three PO R two D two. And 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 I th I actually think humanoid robots will be the biggest product uh, ever in history by far. I agree. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just wild because you can just say, well, every human is going to want one most likely, and some will want two and. And then there'll, there'll be all of the industry in terms of making, providing products and services. So the, you have to say, what's the ratio of humanoid robots to humans? My guess is it's least, at least three to one, four to one, maybe five to one. So we're talking about 20, 30 billion humanoid robots. Our Optimus robot uh, is the most sophisticated humanoid robot in the world. It's got a hand that has 22 degrees of freedom. It looks and feels like a human hand. You know, we're, we're aiming to have several thousand of those built this year. Initially, we'll, we'll, we'll test them out in, at Tesla factories, but then assuming things go well, we, we'll, we'll 10X that, that output next year. So we'll aim to do maybe 50 to 100,000 ro uh, humanoid robots next year, and then 10X it again the following year. It's like 500,000 robots in three years. That's a lot. Trips so when, like when will we have a colony on Mars? I, I think we'll, we'll be able to send the first uh, uncrewed spacecraft to Mars uh, in two years. So Earth and Mars synchronize every two years. Um, and so we're at, we're at a synchronous point right now. So then, then the next one will be in roughly two years from now. And then there'll be two years from then, there'll be another one. So the, for the first trip, obviously, we want to make sure that we, we can land Starship without crashing. Um, and then hopefully that would grow exponentially. So eventually there will be thousands of Starships going to Mars. And, I'm, I'm, and I, I might have this like really cool visual, like Battlestar Galactica or something. You know, the sort of mm -hmm. colony ships departing all together with these like bright points of light in space. Uh, I think it looked really cool. But, so, so, but but I think the goal has to be to get to the point where Mars is self-sustaining. Um, so the point at which Mars is self-sustaining, um, which is def really defined as the point at which, if the resupply shifts from Earth stop coming for any reason, that Mars doesn't die out. That Mars can continue to grow. So if there's something that happens on Earth, like let's say there's a World War III or some natural disaster or who knows what, but for whatever reason, the, the resupply ships stop coming. If, if Mars can still continue to survive, you know, the, then the, the probable lifespan of civilization is dramatically greater. Even if we don't make it beyond our solar system, we're at least got to get to another planet. And, and finally on my list, brain to technology communication. Yeah. Direct communication. Am I, am I going to see that also? Because right now this is looking pretty good for me. 
Neuralink, we've got now three patients with three, three humans with Neuralinks implanted and all working well. And we've upgraded devices that, that, that where the devices will have more, um, more electrodes, basically higher, higher bandwidth, longer battery life and everything. And so we, we expect to, you know, hopefully do, I don't know, 20 or 30 um, patients next year or this year, I should say, with the upgraded Neuralink devices. And, uh, and this, our, our first product is we're, we're trying to enable people who have lost their brain body connection. So they're a tetraplegic or uh, paraplegic or um, uh, like you can imagine, like say Stephen Hawking, if Stephen Hawking could communicate um, as fast or even faster than a normal human, that would be transformational. Yeah. Um, so that, that's our, our sort of our first product is, is um, being able to read the, 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 the motor cortex of the brain and say that if you think about moving your hand, uh, it, it will move the cursor on the screen and it enables it enables people to control their computer or their phone just by thinking and then on, our, our next part will be blind sights so that even if somebody uh, has lost both eyes or has lost the optic nerve uh, or even if they've never they've been blind from birth we can interface directly with the visual cortex in the brain um, and enable them to see and we, we already have that working in monkeys sort of basically enabling people to con control devices uh, and ultimately we think we, 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 if you have a second neural link device uh, that is past the point where the, the spinal damage occurred, we can actually transmit the signals from the, the brain past the where the, essentially the wires are broken and enable someone to walk again. So uh, that, that would really be profound, obviously. But I'm, I'm confident that that is physically possible. Uh, and, but, and, and then the long term goal for Neuralink is to be able to improve the bandwidth. So right, right now, when we're, when we're speaking, our bandwidth in bits per second is quite low. And the sustained bandwidth of a human is less than one bit per second over a 24 hour period. So there's 86,400 seconds in a day and the average human put, uh, outputs much less than 86,400 bits in a day. But, but with, with a neural link, you, you could increase that uh, output capability by a thousand or maybe a million. So it would be a profoundly different experience. Like you'd be superhuman, essentially. I worked out very closely actually with President Clinton in the 90s where we did have reinventing government. We did balance the budget in two years, actually. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, a while. It, it didn't last very long because it didn't last very long. It got blown up very quickly. Uh, have mm -hmm. you identified some cuts that you're really that you're really looking at that you think will be successful? Do you think the two trillion is is a realistic number now that you're looking more closely at it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> I think I think we will we'll try, we'll try for two trillion. I, I think that's like the best case outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think that you, you kind of have to have some overage. I think if we try for two trillion, we we've got a good shot at getting one. And if and if if, if we can get drop the budget deficit from two trillion to one trillion and kind of free up the economy to have additional growth, such that the um, output of goods and services keeps pace with the uh, increase in the money supply, then there will be no inflation. So uh, that, that, that I think would be an epic outcome. And um, in, ter in terms of saving money in the government, well, as you, 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 as you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very target rich environment for saving money. Like if you, if you look at any direction, <laughs> it's like, it was like, where will you find places to save money? I'm like, it's like being in a room full of targets. Like you could close your eyes and, and you can't miss. <laughs> There's just a lot of waste in government, especially the federal government. You, you just got a situation where the, the checks never bounce. Like they've got like the infinite money computer. And, and then the, the, the people that spend the money are not the people, it's, it's not their money. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very hard for, for people to care about spending someone else's money. And then even if you, you know, I, I certainly I know people in the government who do care about, on, on just as a matter of principle, spending money effectively, and they try to do so and they can't. The system prevents them from doing so, um, and they, and they even get told to do crazy things. As as again, it's probably sounds familiar. Where you get towards the end of the budget cycle, and and they're they're told to spend up to their budget, and and even on not on nonsense stuff because if they don't spend their budget, the budget gets reduced. So it's it's actually sort of sort of a perverse incentive to waste money, and 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 then they they kind of get punished for not wasting money. So it's just totally bananas. 视讯影片完整的长度呢，有大概半小时。我们是就马斯克二零二五年的重点性工作来做个简短的分享。不过啊，我相信大家应该可以比较知道马斯克在做什么，以及他整体大计划跟方向。希望今天影片能帮助大家更清楚的了解。小林谈世界财经，今天分享到此，欢迎下次收看，拜拜。